In early 1975, the People's Army of Vietnam swept through several South Vietnamese territories on their way to Saigon. The government pleaded with the Americans for help to no avail, and the town of Xuan Luc became the last stronghold of South Vietnamese resistance. The Army of the Republic of Vietnam sent almost all their remaining forces to defend the strategic crossroad, and President Nguyen Van Thieu ordered the 18th Infantry Division to hold the town at all costs. The South Vietnamese Front then faced the Communist 4th Army Corps in a relentless 13-day battle that would decide the fate of the war. Two sides. Xuan Loc is a district of Vietnam located in its southeast region. It became a strategic point during the war, as it controlled the eastern approach to the South Vietnamese military bases in Bien Hoa and Long Binh, and was only 40 miles away from Saigon. By 1975, Xuan Luc was the last remaining line of defense before Saigon, and the government of the Republic of Vietnam was in deep political unrest, which reflected upon the military's performance in the battlefields. In early April, two attempts to attack President Thieu were foiled, and he became suspicious of his own military commanders. In response to the South Vietnamese Senate recommendations of terminating Prime Minister Tran Sien Hiem's government due to a lack of results, a new Prime Minister was selected, Nguyen Bac Khan. During a meeting on April 3rd with the Chief of Staff of the U.S. Army, General Frederick Weyand, the President outlined his latest plan to defend South Vietnam. Vowing to protect what was left of the battered country, Thieu decided that Xuan Luc would become the center of his resistance. Thieu also pleaded with General Wei-in for support, but the U.S. could not intervene in the conflict. The War Powers Act, enacted in the fall of 1973, severely restricted military intervention without Congress's approval. Meanwhile, the North Vietnamese government was still riding high after several frontline wins throughout the winter and strategically positioned their forces to attack Xuan Luc on the way to Saigon. The Communists' main force in the area was the 4th Army Corps, which were advancing from the northeastern side of the district. The 2nd Corps would then enter from the northwest. They would both face a resistant and hopeful 18th Infantry Division. The 18th Infantry Division During the first stages of the Vietnam War, the Army of the Republic of Vietnam's 18th Infantry Division had a reputation of being their worst unit. However, this perception changed in March of 1972 when Le Minh Dao assumed control of the unit. Dao was one of the best officers in the army and had advanced through the ranks because of his abilities, not due to nepotism or personal connections. The 39-year-old officer always wore dark sunglasses and gave the impression of being just another playboy from the elite South Vietnamese social class. However, his inner strength and strategic mindset would eventually earn him plenty of respect on his way to becoming one of the finest tactical minds of the war. While preparing the defense of Xuan Luc, the general addressed his frontline troops directly and decreed that all of his officers should maintain contact with subordinates at least two levels down. When foreign journalists asked him about his plans only days before the battle, Dao responded that, quote, I'm determined to hold Xuan Luc. I don't care how many divisions the communists will send against me. I will smash them all. The world will see the strength and skill of the Army of the Republic of Vietnam. Countdown to the Battle Dao's first order of business was to evacuate civilians to the relative safety of a base at Long Binh near Saigon. The general then analyzed the routes that the North Vietnamese had used to attack Xuan Luc during the Tet Offensive in 1968. He consequently decided to move his 36 divisional field artillery pieces to a position where they could mass their fire into a triangular-shaped kill zone on the western side of town. Dao then placed his division's guns in reinforced revetments, making sure they were stockpiled with ammunition, and adjusted each one for pinpoint accuracy towards enemy artillery positions. He also positioned two long-range 175mm M107 self-propelled guns at Tan Phong, his first alternate command post. In the days before the battle, his communication and intelligence troops monitored all North Vietnamese radio frequencies, and Dao studied the reports at night. 
the 18th Division would be supported by the 43rd, 48th, and 52nd Field Artillery Battalion, and troops from two popular force companies and four regional force battalions. By the end of March, the North Vietnamese Army's 4th Corps moved toward Xuan Lok with its 6th, 7th, and 341st Divisions, commanded by Major General Huang Kam, and supported by two armored battalions, two artillery battalions, two combat engineering regiments, and a signals regiment. The North Vietnamese Army totaled 20,000 men, while the Army of the Republic of Vietnam had 12,000 soldiers. The pieces were now set for a final confrontation. The Fight for the South The Battle of Xuan Lok officially began on April 9th at 5.40 a.m., when the North Vietnamese began shelling South Vietnamese positions. After one hour of bombardment, the 341st Infantry attacked a communication center on the northern side of the city and successfully overthrew a building and a nearby police station. But the strategic South Vietnamese resistance in the center allowed their 52nd Task Force to counterattack, halting any further advance by the 341st. Further at the eastern side, an open ground assault attempt by the North Vietnamese 7th Infantry Division failed. Eight tanks tried to back them up, but three were destroyed and the other five were forced to withdraw. With two stalling attacks during the first hours of the battle, Major General Kham launched a surprise offensive by ordering his 6th Infantry Division to attack from the southern side of town. Meanwhile, two more infantry regiments from the North Vietnamese Army took advantage of the weak defense line in the south and successfully captured the 18th Infantry Division's headquarters. During the second and third days of the battle, the North Vietnamese forces kept trying to advance but were continually repulsed. In these two days alone, the South Vietnamese Air Force delivered more than 200 bombing sorties. By April 12th, the South's government decided to send reinforcement troops to Xuan Lok and assigned the 1st Airborne Brigade, 33rd Ranger Battalion, 5th Infantry Division, 8th Artillery, and the 315th and 318th Armored Brigades to the town's defense. That same day, fighter bombers flew over 100 combat sorties, dropping ammunition and causing widespread devastation and fear amongst the North Vietnamese soldiers. Change of plan. On April 13th, the North Vietnamese offensive stopped advancing. Frustrated by the lack of progress, General Tran Van Tra, commander of the Viet Cong forces, arrived at the headquarters of the 4th Corps to reassess their plans. It was pivotal to hinder the flow of South Vietnamese reinforcements and supplies, so he ordered his units to act as blocking forces along the two major highways leading into Xuan Lok. The modified operation was launched on April 15th, and the companies along the roads began to tighten the noose around Xuan Lok. Meanwhile, the Viet Cong units in the northern and eastern sides of the city resumed their large-scale attacks, and shelled the Bien Hoa Air Base to prevent any aircraft from taking off. The tides quickly began to change for the South Vietnamese forces. When the Viet Cong troops captured Dao Giai, General Dao ordered his 8th Task Force and 3rd Armored Brigade to retake it. However, they suffered massive casualties and were forced to withdraw from the area. During the following two days, Many South Vietnamese units were attacked from all sides as enemy infantry units infiltrated their defensive line. The 43rd and 48th Infantry Regiments and the 1st Airborne Brigade took the biggest toll. The North Vietnamese then focused their attacks on the outlying townships leading to Xuan Luc, and the units tore through several buildings, destroying both the structures and the troops supporting them. By April 18th, the Viet Cong forces had surrounded and cut off most of Xuan Luc. On the following day, General Dao was ordered to abandon the area and evacuate as many troops as possible towards Bien Hoa, where they would prepare one last defensive line. As rain poured in Xuan Luc, 200 military convoys evacuated soldiers and civilians alike. The 1st Airborne Brigade stayed behind to protect the retreat, but at 4 a.m. they were attacked and completely destroyed. By the end of the day on April 21st, Xuan Luc was under total control of the Viet Cong, and the gateway to Saigon was officially open.
consequences. South Vietnamese President Thieu resigned immediately after the defeat in Xuan Luc and was replaced by Tran Van Huang. Meanwhile, Dao continued to march by foot alongside his troops to resist the advancing North Vietnamese forces. But despite their efforts, Saigon surrendered on April 30th. At the time, the relentless 18th Division was in defense positions near the Bien Hoa Air Base, and they wanted to continue fighting. After changing into civilian clothes, Dao and members of his unit reached the South Vietnamese headquarters, but found no one alive. Dao finally surrendered on May 9th and spent 17 years in brutal re-education camps. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, the general was one of the last four senior officers freed in the spring of 1992. Ultimately, the Battle of Xuan Luc cost the South Vietnamese over 2,000 casualties and two-thirds of their territory, allowing the Viet Cong forces into Saigon and effectively putting an end to the war. Thank you for watching our Dark Ducks channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest content. And let us know in the comments below about any other topics of your interest.